Okay, hi guys, welcome to another Xcode programming tutorial, and today rather than uh, designing a specific function for an app, we're going to be looking at a certain portion of an app, which a lot of you have been questioning and wondering what exactly it does, and we're looking at the app delegate. So let's first create a new project so I can start showing you, so I'm just going to call it app delegate. This is more of a theory lesson, you don't need to follow along with this one, I'm really just showing you all the different features of the app delegate and what it does. So you'll notice on every single app you make, you're going to have an app delegate.m and .h. You're not going to have a view controller for the app delegate. And the app delegate is what uh, joins your app to the iPhone, essentially. Your app goes through the app delegate, and the app delegate tells the iPhone, OK, this is my app, could you make it work, pretty much. So everything that your app does, so I've got my view controller, all of this code is going to be passed through the app delegate, and the app delegate's then going to transfer it onto the iPhone. It's the delegate, essentially. That's really the simplest way to put it. So all of your system actions, so when you close your app, when you open your app, when the app, you know, maybe when Notification Center was open, so it sort of went into the background, any of those sort of things, they all uh, interact through the app delegate. You're never going to write the code for that in a view controller. So let's have a look at the various features. There's a few. Uh, we'll start with application did finish launching with options. Now, you can ignore um, the with options section because that doesn't really matter that's just the various launch options and you really don't need to know about that yet this is the method that is run every time your app is open so if I press the if I've got my app running I press the home button and then I click the icon and it reopens then it's going to run this uh, did finish launching with options method as you can see it creates a window for the application it sets the window to show the show the features of view controller which is one of our uh, one of our files, and so that's essentially just creating the basic app of grey screen, it's not doing anything else, and if I wanted to do something when the app launched, I'd put it here, so let's put an NS login, if you don't know what an NS login is, uh, look, uh, check out our debug, debugging tutorial, I've gone through it then, and I will say app did open, and now, if we run this, you're going to see that when the app opens, we're going to get a log saying the app did open. So, watch the console, and here we go, app did open. And if I quit it, if I just press the home button and then open it again, we're going to have the same method run. Uh, again, if I force quit it, then you're going to see it. Uh, we'll get an error if we stop it, and then we run it, you'd see it again. Obviously, you won't because it's not running the log file anymore. So that that's uh, when your application opens. You might want to do something when your application opens. If you want to do something when a view opens, then do it in view to load in the views method file. But if you want to do something when the actual app opens, you put it here. If you want to change the default view, you can put that code there. You also have to go into your info.p list, which you find in your project summary and change the opening view. Uh, or you can go into the summary and change it there. But that's your view to load. So let's now go into our uh, application did enter background. And they've got good comments here. It's actually quite useful. Uh, we can see that it says use this method to release shared resources, save user data, and validate timers, all of that. If your application supports background execution, this method is called instead of application will terminate when the user quits. So we can do a test here to see whether our application is using application did enter background or application. Uh, will terminate. So let's do a test. We'll do an NS log and we will say app did close. If we zoom out, we're going to run this again. Watch the output console. So we've got app did open and app did close. So they're the two different um, main methods that you're going to use app did open, app did close. It's particularly important to know about the app did close, app did enter background, sorry, method, this one because that's where you can then save data, which is a particularly important one. If you've got an app that saves data, and you want when the app closes to save all the data so that when the user reopens it, it's still all there, so maybe you've got a text editor and you want it to have a recovered file section like Microsoft Word or something, put that in the application did enter background, not your view controller method, because if your app crashes, it's not going to go into view controller and bother with void, and it's not there by default in Xcode, but you can write it in void view did uh, close I think or view did hide or something along those lines is the name of the method it's not going to run that if your app crashes it's going to completely ignore view did quit 
and it's going to go, it's just going to, it is going to do this method though, that method's run every time, even if the app force quits, even if they turn off the device while the app's running, so that's the method where you save all your restoration data, so I might have, you know, ns string uh, save equals then, you know, text field dot text, and I'd have to then declare the text field in the app delegate, which you don't really need to know about. Um, also go for NS user defaults. If you've got something like a rate view, which I'm going to show you in our next tutorial where the user gets prompted, you know, if you like this app, why not go to the app store and rate it every fifth time? It's going to go either on the quit method or the load method. It's going to add to the times it's been open, so you can do every fifth time rather than just a random time. Um, so that's application did into background. That's mainly all you need to know about that. There's a few other ones, um, so what, when I was talking about the notification center, that's an application, when the user opens a uh, notification center, you'll notice if you're like in the middle of watching a video, the video is going to pause, and the application hasn't entered the background, it hasn't quit, so this essentially means quit. Um, it hasn't quit the application, so you're not going to put it there, you're going to put it in application will resign. And that's, it, it describes it well here, when a phone call or SMS, or if there's a game, it should pause the game. Uh, if you use the Dropbox application, you'll notice when you get a phone call, or you double-click the home button to get the multitasking pane, or notification centers pulled down, or an RS7, you open up control center, you will notice that the Dropbox, rather than just, you know, going to a pause screen or something, it just shows the Dropbox logo. And you might wonder how they do that, there's a few apps that do that, and essentially they're going... When the application has become inactive, just set the screen to be this, and then as soon as it did become active again, then run this method. So if we do an NS log, and it might not work well on the simulator, uh, I'm just going to show it with the notification center. So let's watch this. We're going to have application did open. And we should, yeah, there you go, as I pulled our notification center, you notice that it says notification. So, uh, you can see that, obviously, that's useful for if you do get a phone call and you want to pause a game. It's particularly useful in games, that's the main use. If you're in the middle of uploading a file to a server and you don't want it to stuff up suddenly, that's again useful. So, there's a few good uses for it, and I highly suggest you do look into that method more and start using it in your apps. It's a great way, when you've got your launch screen, you've got a launch screen, and that's usually your logo. So maybe when a phone call is received, you just show your logo until it's finished. And that's really good because it means none of the data is stolen. So if a phone call comes in and then someone else takes your phone, they can't see the data you were just looking at. So it's good for privacy, it's good for games, it's good for data restoration again. And then when it becomes active again, so then when I quit Notification Center, that's going to uh, show in this method. So let me show you that. Uh, we'll see if that works in the simulator. So what we should get is we should get the app did open, and we've got the app to become active, so it's run that method. And if I do this, it's notification, and then it goes back, so uh, notification, and then back to the app. The only issue with this method is it runs as soon as the app opens, so you might need to do something like, on the first time this method runs, then it's clearly just the app being open, so ignore it, and then on the second time, then it's actually going from the background to, or non-active to active again, inactive to active. Uh, application will terminate. You don't really need to use that much, as it says in this co uh, in the comment. You can use application to enter background, so that's when it enters background. And that's sort of right as you click the home button, it runs this method really quickly, or as quickly as the phone allows it. If you were to put a phone in slow motion, you'd actually see it stepping through this as the app quit, and also stepping through this code, um, application will design active. So that's the app delegate, the, the file that communicates with the phone directly. It's the delegate to the phone from your app, essentially. If you think about the word delegate in its true sense, it's essentially someone or something which passes data to something else, and that's what the app delegate is. So if you've got any questions about the app delegate or you want to know more about it, uh, send a comment or a message to us, or visit 99 com and send us a message. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.